Let us start this lecture with a thought process that um, human relationship with flame is as old as Indian civilization and Indian civilization is the most oldest or uh, the oldest civilization of the entire world as recently being uh, talked about. <coughs> So, uh, in the last lecture, if you recall that we basically looked at the flammability limits, then we moved into the flame stability. We discussed about various regimes of lifted flame and then uh, blow off and the flashback and stable flame and also there will be some oscillation, oscillating flames, right, we talked about. And we also derived the expression that uh, that is basically the velocity gradient at the rim right which will be dictating particularly for the bunsen flame whether the flame will be stable unstable or blow off will be occurring or not right and uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, a very important one that about ignition question arises what do you mean by ignition ignition is basically a process by which the combustion is initiated. That means, how we can do that? We basically have to provide some external energy and that should be sufficient such that not only initiate the combustion, but it must also uh, such that the energy released by the combustion should be much higher than the heat loss such that flame can be self propagated. So, uh, if you look at the uh, ignition is a quite complex process comprises of basically physical and chemical phenomena like means there will be mixing will, which will be occurring and also there will be uh, the kinetics or the chemical kinetics the chemical reaction will be taking place to initiate a combustion process using external stimuli. Stimuli means basically you can think of giving some energy, right. A question might be arises, what are the kinds of stimuli generally we give to initiate combustion? Any idea? That means it is a form of energy, right. Energy as you know, it is basically various form, right. It can be as the name suggests the chemical energy, it can be thermal energy and it can be mechanical energy. When you talk about the thermal energy is basically can be transferred with the help of three modes. One is heat conduction, convection and radiation. It can be combination any one of three or all of them, right. In uh, principle basically in practical systems all three of them would be there as a heat loss, okay. And also heat gain like that means you will have to give some heat through this medium by this method or, or transfer the heat rather by this method. And there is a another way of uh, giving this external uh, stimuli is the chemical energy by using hypergolic reactive agents right. I can give some kind of a uh, spaces or a very mobile radicals and give that so that reactant can occur. And uh, there is a another way of uh, which is uh, being used is the mechanical energy that is mechanical impact. I can give some impact you know like kind of things and or the friction or the shock waves so that some heat can be generated. You might be wondering what is this why this impact comes into picture. You might be knowing like uh, particularly some kind of uh, explosion when you uh, have they give some impact to occur you know you might have seen in movies or some other places right. And uh, shock of course is uh, also being given because if you give a impact it may lead to a shock and then you can do that also right. And friction is very rarely used. Uh, so now how we can uh, use this uh, basic principles 
to devise a igniter is the question, right? So, what are the kinds of igniters you are aware? Any idea? Which all of you know? Mass stick is okay. You can say that you are giving basically some kind of chemical energy, right? Along with thermal, both thermal and chemical you give, right? And uh, what else? Piezo electric. Lighter. Lighter. But see, basically, basically, it will be generating a spark, right? And in your, um, like in your LPG stove, other thing we do use. Any other thing? In your IC engine, you know, like uh, you must be aware in your um, motorcycle or the moped, right? You use or in a car use spark plug, right, is not it. And uh, types of igniter if you look at it can be varieties, but some of them I have just jotted down. Uh, first one is the spark plug, which is very commonly used in the for uh, initiating combustion LPG stoves or the any uh, gaseous fuel stoves or a spark ignition engine. Uh, even your uh, gas turbine engines and other places and furnaces you use. I have shown you a typical uh, spark uh, plug, right? This is a spark plug. And if you look at uh, this is a one uh, electrode cathode and anode, and this is subjected to a very high voltage, and this voltage will be order of something 10,000 to 20,000 volts and there is a gap, it is not connected, right, this electro and that gap creates a uh, breaking down of these uh, gases which will be there here in this between having certain diameter and the, uh, width that is the D, right, and this is very critical and this uh, when the voltage is applied across this very high voltage that will be broken down like a very iron and then uh, space is high uh, you know uh, uh, velocity spaces which will be moving at a faster rate and then trying to bombard with the other uh, mixtures and then it will be some reaction will be taking place releasing certain amount of heat energy and the, by that uh, the combustion initiated and uh, of course there is a hardware right if you look at if i take a resistance and connect to some kind of a voltage source, right? This is nothing but a hardware. And electrical squeeves are being used, right? Not in generally, but in rocket engines, where uh, you know uh, there will be a propellant, right? Uh, this is the electrical squeeze, and it is, and this is basically where where this will be propellants will be there, propellant means solid propellant, okay. generally people use it and you will have to give a source as a voltage and this is a squib and keep in mind that these wares are um, coated with the, some very high reactive propellants, lead azides and other things, right. So, that that will be you know some heat will be passing through this because this is having some resistance and then those things will be reacting to start with and then it will go to the prop propellants and then you will ignite and that is basically known as a pyrotechnic uh, igniters is a pyrotechnic igniter is used in a solid propellant and uh, the pyrogen uh, igniters is a bit nothing but a smaller rocket engines which will be giving you hot products to that like uh, uh, to the bigger rocket motors and that is pyrogen igniters. Beside this, there is a glow plug which is similar to the spark plug, but the thing is that it will be not in this surface, it will be a bigger one and then there will be a flame will be there, bigger flame will be there, glow plug, which is used in your uh, basically uh, piston engines in whenever it is used for the um, aircraft applications, right. And beside this in recent times people are talking about lasers and uh, other things which is as a source and we had done some work on this laser ignition. 
uh, and uh, as I told earlier one can use also SOC producing a SOC to impact testers uh, for uh, basically initiating the explosion react, explosive reactions kind of things. But what we will be discussing uh, in this lecture basically the spark plug and then uh, how to analyze that we will be doing. <coughs> now we will have to look at what are the conditions that affect the ignition or in other words what are the variables that affect the ignition. And uh, whenever you uh, talk about that people talk about uh, basically three important things for the initiation of ignition and also the other things will be affecting the minimum ignition energy that is required for uh, initiating the combustion. And uh, what are those that uh, as the name indicates like uh, basically temperature, time and turbulence because the temperature is very important that means when you give certain amount of energy to initiate the combustion you will have to raise its temperature to certain higher level beyond the self ignition temperature then only it will be self sustaining otherwise no right it would not really ignite. So, um, and the duration of the heat or the energy what will be giving for initiating combustion important. Even in your numerical calculations you know like you will have to also give certain amount of energy to initiate right. If you give less amount then naturally it will not really initiate the combustion time is important and if there is a turbulence then what will happen the heat will be dissipated out right. So, very quickly so therefore, you will have to give certain more amount of energy uh, uh, you know whenever the flow is turbulent. So, this is uh, generally known as popularly is 3 T right T you know uh, starting with the temperature uh, later T. So, temperature time and time. beside this the pressure will be affecting the uh, ignition energy and so also the velocity right because the flow uh, in uh, in a certain uh, practical application the flow will be not stationary it will be uh, uh, not a quiescent atmosphere it will be moving. So, the velocity and also the ignition will be affected by the fuel type of fuel oxidizer mixture for example, methane air right if you uh, you will have to give certain amount of energy, but if you move to the hydrogen air for the same equivalence ratio you will have to give the smaller amount of energy because hydrogen air is more reactive. And uh, beside this the transport properties which will be plays important like thermal diffusivity and then mass diffusivity those things will be uh, and there will be some minimum uh, ignition radius through which you will have to give the amount of energy in to initiate the combustion. Suppose the it is just too small then what will happen? It will be less than the quenching diameter what will happen? naturally it will be quenched at all the heat will be lost instead of initiating the combustion. So, therefore, this is the initial radius or minimum radius uh, uh, of the ignition volume plays a very important role. So, ignition if you look at uh, this is I have shown you a spark plug and the you know electrode is there you can connect this thing to a very high voltage source right and then when it will there having certain diameter and this would be the critical diameter generally it will be uh, much higher or rather it will be higher than the uh, what you call quenching diameter. And then what will happen and then uh, there will be a arc which will be produced because the voltage uh, there will breaking down of the uh, mixtures which will be there fuel and uh, uh, oxidizer mixture right. And then uh, this will be ions will be produced and then there will be some spaces which will be moving at a higher velocities and it will move around and bombarded with the fuel oxidizer mixture and then flame kernel may be formed right. If I say this is ignited there will be a flame kernel right uh, flame kernel right initiation then it will be going through that and then uh, you know after that flame will be self sustained. So, this is the ignition what uh, the spark we will talk about it. Uh, so, therefore, uh, when you say this thing that means the rate of heat liberated near the ignition zone must be greater than the heat loss 
uh, by the heat conduction and convection and radiation. To, uh, just now the analysis what we are going to do, we are only considering heat conduction due to the presence of electron. Okay. But in real situation, there will be radiation, there will be convection that we are not considering. So, now when you uh, uh, do that, what we are uh, considering is basically let us say this is the electrode, right? these are the electrodes and then the flame is inside this uh, in between electrode and keep in mind that this is the minimum uh, diameter what you are talking about is quenching diameter because it should be greater than that. But let us say we are interested to evaluate the minimum ignition energy therefore, we are taking the quenching diameter. Uh, but in some book people do calculate this what is the critical diameter, okay? but I have assumed it as a quenching diameter. And having a flame thickness del L of course, we are considering this laminar and uh, this will be moving with certain uh, flame laminar burning velocity S L. right? And this mixture this is the fuel plus uh, oxidizer mixture right? in this volume right? and this is a circular in nature. right? So, if you look at this is a circular uh, in nature cross section and uh, there will be some heat uh, conduction here and there is the unburnt temperature, this is the flame temperature that means the mixture has to raise to the flame temperature right. This is the amount of energy uh, minimum amount of energy what you have to give. So, uh, we can say that energy generated in the flame with this uh, volume right, is equal to sensible enthalpy into mass. Right. So, that means the minimum ignition energy is nothing but your sensible enthalpy. So, this is your sensible enthalpy, right. this is your sensible enthalpy and this is your mass which is considered pi by 4 d q square right into delta L into rho u, rho u is the uh, density of the unburnt mixture right, delta L is the flame thickness right, this is basically flame thickness. Now, if you look at we have already seen that d q we can express in terms of in terms of flame uh, thickness right, flame thickness. So, that is nothing but your L 8 C delta L right, we have already derived. Now, uh, what I will do, I will just put this thing here like uh, C P T F minus T U into pi by 4 in, in place of D Q, I will put 8 C delta L square right and uh, delta L will be there and rho U right. So, this is nothing but your 2. So, therefore, the we can substituting this quenching diameter, I will get uh, 2 pi c, c is your constant, right. Good values will be varying like uh, you can say constant, right, uh, that is um, nothing but your delta L q, right. We know that delta L q, right. I can express in terms of flame laminar burning velocity right uh, 4 by 3 alpha by S L right. So, if I will write it down here that is uh, 2 pi C rho u C p T f minus T u into uh, L q means it will be uh, 4 by uh, 64 by 27 alpha q by S L q. So, we know alpha is basically k g by rho u c p. So, in place of this right, I can write down what k g uh, I can write down that I can write down k g by uh, alpha right. Can I not write down? So, this became cancel it out. So, uh, I can get basically m i e is equal to 128 pi c by 27 t f minus 
T u into uh, k g alpha square by S L q right this is alpha square by S L q is it fine the C is already there right that means what it says minimum ignition energy will be dependent on basically what this will be dependent on the uh, fuel air ratio because T f will be dictated by the fuel air ratio right and then it will be dependent on the burning velocity right S L and S L is a function of in initial temperature, uh, initial pressure right okay. that means M I E is basically function of phi right function of initial temperature right T U pressure and then it will be properties like uh, kg and alpha all those things will be there. So, uh, and also it will be function of S L right and keep in mind that this analysis what we have done is meant only for the quiescent atmosphere that means there is no flow ok are you getting uh, how it uh, this minimum ignition energy depends on the pressure. So, uh, if you look at this is basically uh, alpha you know that k g by rho u c p. So, I can write down that 128 pi c by 27 t f minus t u and this will be k g q right by rho u square s l q right. So, I can say that minimum ignition energy is basically rho u square S L q and we know that that uh, S L, S L is proportional to what P n by 2 minus 1, minus 1 or it will be 2, it will be 1 right n by 2 that we have already seen. So, that is nothing but your uh, 3 n by 2 right minus 1 am I right or wrong or let me just do it if you are not getting let us say this is basically p power to the rho u is nothing but your rho u is basically p uh, square right rho p is equal to rho u r t. So, therefore, uh, minus it will be 2 and uh, p power to the this will be 3 n by 2 minus 1. So, that is nothing but your or is proportional to rather p is equal to minus 3 n by 2 minus 1 right. So, this will be minus right is coming. So, you will see that it will be uh, basically depends on the pressure by this coefficient and where n is the order of chemical reaction right. So, now let us look at how does it basically depends on equivalence ratio and also type of well. And if you look at for the equivalence ratio 1 I have taken this data the minimum ignition energy uh, is 0 0.47 millijoule it is a very small amount of energy right are you getting and ethane air is 0 0.4 and butane air little bit low 0 0.34 and if you look at acetylene air is 0 0.03 and hydrogen air even much lower 0 0.02 millijoules why it is so because SL or the laminar burning velocity is very high in case of hydrogen air and the acetylene air and also CO air that we have already seen in the data right. So, the uh, uh, and whereas right. So, therefore, this is the in under the quiescent atmosphere and phi over 1. If phi is low then what will happen? If it is a lean let us say mixtures phi is equal to 0 0.6 or 0 0.7. So, what will happen to let us say methane air 
minimum ignition will it increase or decrease it will definitely increase because the laminar bending velocity is getting lower down uh, with the uh, change of the equivalence ratio either towards the lean side or the re side right so uh, that we will be looking at it so uh, if you look at this is the uh, uh, you know data which i have shown spark ignition energy versus methane air percentage of methane air, methane and uh, this is for uh, methane air system ch4 air flame you can see at stoichiometric it is a minimum values and then it goes up both the lean side fuel lean and the re side and keep in mind that this mixtures right what you want to ignite must be within the flammability limit otherwise you cannot ignite whatever the amount of energy we may provide okay so that you should keep in mind and let us to see that variation of uh, minimum uh, energy uh, ignition minimum ignition energy with pressure for fuel air so we have seen that the uh, minimum ignition energy uh, is proportional to power pressure basically uh, p power to 3 n by 2 minus 1 if i take the order of reaction is something 2 right this is your order of a uh, reaction right for a hydrocarbon uh, air mixtures if i take certain range right so what you will see you will see this is around what this will be 2 if i will say this is nothing but your proportional to p power t minus 2 right we will see how it is you know uh, there with this uh, uh, experimental data these are experimental data right and this is the variation minimum spark in a by the p by 2 so in the low pressure it is almost matching of course high pressure it will be deviating because uh, as i told you earlier the order of reaction will be dependent on the pressure i have shown you right so uh, therefore you keep in mind that uh, this is very important point because as the pressure decreases the ignition energy is increasing tremendously you keep in mind that this is in uh, uh, you know log plot the value is very high and that has to be taken care particularly for the aircraft engine when it is operated at high altitude that means pressure so you will have to provide the uh, more amount of energy right so uh, with this uh, i will uh, stop over here and we will see in the next lecture some of the aspect of the ignition energy in, and uh, later on we'll move to the turbulent premix flame okay thank you